I fully agree. I was blown away by watching his performance. I want to say a couple things about him. Number one, the strategy I agree with is huge. I mean, taking it to AJ from the word go was the right decision and his ability to execute on the game plan, incredible. But we got to say something else. 98,000 people in attendance in Wembley Arena, 98,000, and you would have thought there were nine people there given the poise of Daniel Dubois, like it didn't even matter yeah. at all. He is supposed to be starstruck in this moment. How many times before Saturday had, had Anthony Joshua done a stadium show? Five, six times? Something crazy. Setting British boxing records for attendance. This was another one he did. And by the way, that's another credit to Joshua, like how important he's been no doubt. as an economic driver of that scene in boxing more generally. But I, I thought that Dubois who we covered one of his fights on the Jake Paul card. Granted, that was a while ago, but he was just, I mean, he was, I remember we talked about him. He was like, he's a good prospect, kind of a donk. We'll see how it goes. In the lead up to the fight and on, on Instagram, he's pulling chat GPT prompts out and then pasting them onto his, uh, his account for the, for the post he's putting up, just like a total fucking donk. And then he goes out there absolutely ice fucking cold like there was nobody there, like no one was watching other than his own fucking trainer and put it on a mountain of a man who, by the way, he's also British and it felt like he was in the mouth of the lion here. And so I just want to say, you're talking about Anthony Joshua's poise to get off the mat, which I echo, but the, 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 what do you want to call it? The, the moxie, the moxie, but more than that, just the absolute certainty yes. by Daniel Dubois that he belonged there and he was about to put it on this guy in front of the largest crowd, I think, in British boxing history. It was. Is remarkable. Let's go to the uh, soundbite Long Island Luke of uh, Dan Dubois afterwards. People are ripping him for this, but like you can see in his face, he had an unnatural level of like psychotic focus for this. I've only got a few things to say, man. You know, are you not entertained? Like, the moment never seemed remotely too big for nothing, him. Nothing. Not even like close. Like, nothing shook his confidence throughout. That takes a cool customer, and that's not the same guy who lost to Joe Joyce or even lost to Usyk, to be fair, even though his performance in that age is better. Just like it's a, it, the win for Usyk age is better, of so course. So, this is what I love about this performance, because on part of it is because I think AJ had a bad strategy. And again, even if you discount the third round, he should not have been hit as cleanly as he was in the first round by that big punch, which he may have never recovered from. But it is also true that Dubois' strategy in this fight was fantastic. His execution of that strategy was fantastic by pushing behind the jab, obviously then changing the rhythm of the jab, then doubling up on the jab, and then throwing those right hands behind it, making, by the way, what did you always see? Backhand, rear hand parry from AJ, and then his other hand would come out. So BC, where was the right hand coming from? Right over the top of this. He got hit with that multiple times. They audited this fucking guy. Yes, they did. Daniel Dubois and his team, they audited Anthony Joshua, and they had him dead to rights, even when, by the way, he gets rocked with a vicious shot that Anthony Joshua lays on him in the fifth. Like, that was, I thought that might have been the beginning of the end, because you saw Dubois wobble. What did he redo? What did he do? Centers himself, bites down on the mouthpiece, and fucking exchanges with the guy. And, and, but they were such short, perfect but that's shots, exact. So man. here comes Dubois, sorry, here comes Joshua with like a punch from Oklahoma. Like, oh! <laughs> and Dubois just came with a little short one. By the way, on my breakdown, you'll see it. That exact sequence happens in the fourth round, but Dubois didn't land quite cleanly. Boy, he landed cleanly this time. I just want to say, for as much as you can pick on Joshua for not doing what you know he could probably do a lot better, win or lose, he could do it better. Dubois finally explained to me how good he was. I feel like after three fights, fighting Jarrell Miller, stopping him. Fighting Philippe Hergovic, stopping him. Fighting Anthony Joshua, statement win, yes. stopping him. Now at 27, I'm like, oh, right. Now I've got a sense of how good Dubois can be. I don't think he can beat Usyk, but I think anybody else in that division is fair fucking game. You just nailed it. I think even against Usyk, who low blow or not, and I think after watching the replay, I'm an Usyk guy to some degree, but I, I really thought that that was a low blow. It was it was borderline enough where, it, but you could argue there was a knockout there, and Definitely, he got criticized, of course, for succumbing to the jab knockout that Usyk landed later in round nine. But with this performance, it it makes you recalculate what you think Dubois is capable of. 
So, Luke, would you say, I, I was talking with Brent Brookhouse of CBS Sports over this. We were sort of re-ranking on like a pound-for-pound pound level our heavyweight division after this. And he goes, you know, I think Dubois, is like, this version of Dubois is the third best heavyweight besides Usyk and Fury. I don't know if you can argue against that. That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. So what I love about this is he beats Miller, top 10, top 15 win. Then he beats Hergovic, top seven-ish win. And then he beat AJ. That's a, that was a, he was ranked third in this division prior to this, according to the IBF, I think, anyway. Um, or maybe he was second in IBF. Either way, he's up there. He would, I think most people had him in that 2-3 range. Sure. He just beat him. And again, stopping all three. How could you even argue he's not the third best? What, what, what would it even be? And by the way, again, I don't know if Tyson Fury will end up facing him. I don't know how that's going to go. You saw him complaining to, I think, either Conor McGregor or Turkey. He's like, this guy just cost me $150 oh, yeah. million. You'll see that in some shit later on. Okay. <laughs> and I can understand being like, what the fuck? At the same time, would I favor Dubois over Fury? I don't know. I think it's kind of a toss-up at this yeah. point. But if you had asked me that a week ago, I'd be like, oh, no, Fury would just, you know, probably box circles around him, even though Dubois would make it spirited. No, Dubois, I think, ex with the exception of Usyk, can beat basically anyone in that this division. This is why heavyweight boxing is so crazy and why we always say, you know, one punch can change everything, and it's so true. We don't actually know what this fight looks like if he doesn't hit that early right hand on AJ. We don't know if AJ's defense falls apart completely. Yeah, but the technique. thing is, he was going for it. No, that's the point. I know, that's you know the point I mean? of like how he, he got it done. I, I, mean but, that, I, don't, I don't mean just literally in that moment. I mean, like... The expanse of it, my dude. This dude was trying. You my know? point is that this performance makes Dubois look like he can take down Godzilla, and I don't know if this is actually him moving forward or not. It was him for five rounds. He locked in and he got it. But I got to give him so much credit because he was the champion coming in, and and even though we were excited about this fight and, and loved that it was such a big platform and expected to be such a big crowd, and one of the Gallagher brothers from Oasis was going to be there, and, he you know, sucked. I didn't Donkey end up seeing balls. it. I, I got home too late. But <laughs> you know. Dubois I go flipped one, one. that script. So, Luke, obviously, I want to go, okay, I want to see Dubois against the winner of uh, Usyk Fury 2 and see what he can do there. But then you get Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua talking about the immediate rematch clause that they have. and then, But then you get Frank Warren saying they have an immediate rematch clause. We don't, but we'd still be willing to negotiate and potentially honor it because it's such a big fight. And obviously, we all have to wait on Fury and Usyk in December anyway. I don't know how that makes sense because, you know, if AJ's the, the star coming in and he gets the... You know, does just because Dubois didn't have one doesn't mean it cancels out AJ. Notwithstanding, um, we think they're going to have to do it again. So.